Hello. Uh, in this video what I want to do is go over the graph tool in Illustrator. It uh, doesn't get a lot of um, screenplay these days. It seems like the current book doesn't cover it. And uh, you know, with Excel, why would you ever want to use Illustrator for graphs anyway? Well, there's, there's actually some good uses here. So I thought I'd just walk through the basics and then show you um, some a little more interesting things you can do with it. Um, what I've done is I've made a graph in Illustrator and you'll notice that when I select it with a black arrow it selects everything here. Um, to make a graph what you do is uh, you get out the graph tool and you just draw out a rectangle and when you do that you get a little pop-up that shows you uh, a way that you can uh, type in data. You can go ahead and put in your data or you can also, I, th I think they have a little import um, yeah, notice you can import from an Excel spreadsheet if you wanted, which is a lot easier. But in any case, that's uh, how you get started with a graph in Illustrator. I've made this one, and if I select it, I can go under Object, down to Graph, and I can choose Data from here. And this data is actually something I can adjust. Um, so if I come in, for example, I've, I've made this graph that has, uh, let's see, uh, waffles, pancakes, and cereal consumption over the course of a couple of years. If I come in and change one of these, let's update this to 600, I have to press this goofy looking little checkbox. It's, it's actually looked like this ever since I've used graphs back in Illustrator 3. Um, but notice that when I do, it does update the information here. Um, so that we have current, uh, current new fresh data. So the graphs are something that you can change over time even though the artwork exists inside of Illustrator. Um, I'll just type in something else. Let's see what it does. There we go. You can see it popping down. It'll automatically figure out the, the height for you. Um, I mean the, the, um, the number display for you. All of those kinds of things. But uh, notice also here that I have it broken out by waffles, pancakes, cereal, and then the years down below. If you want to show something like a year, instead of being a number, you have to put quotes around it. And if you ever make a graph and it's not displaying things right, you can always transpose the row and the column. So if I switch this around, notice if I preview it again, now it shows it by year in the key, and then it has the type going along the bottom. So you can always just flip these back and forth if, if you're ever not quite sure what you want to do. Um, you know, the key thing with most graphs is you have longitudinal graphs like this where you track something over time. And then you also have percentage type pie graphs where you're looking at a percentage of a whole. Um, and I'll show you how to do a pie graph as well. We could um, pop open the tool here. Notice there's all kinds of things in here that you can choose. So it, you don't have to be limited to just these column graphs. So the next obvious question is, well, you know, this is awfully boring. Uh, can I at least change the color? You can. And uh, the first thing to keep in mind is you can just get out the direct selection tool and you choose its cousin here, the group selection tool. And what it does is it chooses as I click on this, it chooses the next item up in the group. So I was able to select all these gray rows, and I could easily come in now and just pick a different color if I wanted. Piece of cake. Um, you can do some other things with the data too. If I select this, I can go, well, also, I can just come in and select the type if I want to work with the different typefaces in here and I want to change it to something else, I could do that as well. So it becomes an Illustrator object, but it's important that you don't ungroup it. Once it becomes ungrouped, it no longer will support the graph information, which sometimes you care about, sometimes you don't. I had graphs like this that I had to update on a weekly basis, so it was really nice to be able to go in and just alter that data and keep the graph itself the same. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to go through now is some of the other items that you might have in a graph. If you go under Object, again to Graph, notice that there's Type, and this is where you can go in. You can redefine how you want to do. You, 
you can put in a drop shadow if you want. You can see how these guys look. Ugh, that looks terrible. Um, it's it's funny graphs. This tool just must not get updated very often um, because there's not a preview in here. The, these things are kind of goofy. But notice that you can choose what kind of width you want for the columns. Um, you can also choose how much of a cluster. So if you're grouping these together, how much is left over on either side. Um, and then you know there's other options in here, value access as well. So you can override the values that are going up. You can put in minimum and maximums. You can choose whether you're going to have tick marks, etc. Um, so anyway, that, that's basic stuff. But now, why, again, would we want to use it in Illustrator rather than make Excel? I haven't made a really good case for that yet. Well, I'm going to come down here, and I've made some artwork in Illustrator. And it's pretty bad artwork, but we have a cereal bowl, we have some pancakes, and we have some waffles, or at least one waffle. What I'm going to do is just select the pancakes here. And I'm going to go under Object, down to Graph, and choose Design. And I'm going to choose New Design. And it takes what I've already got selected, and it drops that in. And I'm going to just rename this design. I can't even double click on it to rename it. That's how silly this is. And then I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to do that for each of these guys. Go. Okay, so I've got the designs in. Now, what I'm going to do is come back up to my graph. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to just select one group. So again, I'm using my group selection tool. I'm clicking on the key for serial. I'm clicking once more to get all the other serial columns. Now I'm going to go under Object to Graph. And let's choose Column. And notice you can choose a design to go in here. So I'll choose Serial. Now, vertically scaled, again, since we don't have a preview, you can see what this looks like. Vertically scaled will stretch it the whole size, which will look really bad. Um, I'll undo that. And instead, let's choose one of these guys. Um, I'm going to choose repeating. Uniformly scaled would take this bowl and just make it really big where it got tall and a little bit smaller in width and as well as height. Um, so when I'm choosing repeating, it's saying, hey, uh, how many things do you want this to represent? Well, let's go ahead and have it do maybe 20 units. Um, actually, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change it to 50. And then it says, hey, if you come in somewhere in between 50, what do you want to do? Well, you can scale it to make it smaller, or you can choose chop. I'll show you how chop works. I kind of like chop, but there's going to be times where you're going to want either. When I do that, notice that the, all the graphs move up and come through. And now I get the serial, and it's chopping wherever I don't have a full 50 units. Now, it also rotated this guy. Let's uh, click again. See if we can adjust this. I'm sorry. Let's see. Column. And it says rotate legend design. I'm going to turn that off. And you know, I think the 50 for the the unit itself works okay. All right. And then we'll do the same for pancakes. Chop the pancakes. Now you can see here pancakes. Wait, did I put on only five? Maybe I just put five in. It doesn't look right. 
oh, 20, rather than 50. There we go. Now we get our pancakes in there, and then finally waffles. And I'll choose scale here just so you can see the difference. And there's our waffles. Um, notice that when we reach a fraction with a waffle, it's scaling it. So it's kind of squishing it rather than clipping it, as in with the other graphs. So this is a good example of why you might use Illustrator for something like this. Now, of course, I've made really crummy looking artwork here, um, but there's other times when you might do this. I've seen school reports before where they've had a pencil and this pencil's been scaled up and down um, to, to fit in there to kind of talk about school supplies or I don't know test scores or something like that. Um, so there are times when being able to add artwork like this is really advantageous. Of course this is all vector based so you bring this over into InDesign and do a layout and it looks great. Boy getting a graph out of Excel into something other than Word um, is really difficult to do so you've got a fully vectored scalable alterable graph that that you can fiddle around with so hopefully you'll take a look at these um, presentation graphics sometimes seems kind of boring but boy think about it every company that I know of makes stupid little reports and those reports usually have to take some complex statistical information and convert them into data that, that people can understand and that's usually using something like a graph. So I hope I've kind of given you a reason to, to uh, give this a, another look. Um, by the way, if you go into Illustrator Help and just look up graph, uh, there's a lot more information there. Um, so if I just, let's type in graph and see what it comes up with. And it always goes to the community, but yeah, you see here, um, intergraph data about graph designs. Um, you can see here, here's a good description of these, these two different designs. Um, one I didn't talk about here, there's the repeating. Here's a sliding scale. Um, the sliding design is, is neat. Read about this. It's, it's slick because you can designate certain parts of the graph to stretch while other parts of it stay stationary. So that's kind of a, you know, a, a useful thing for, for um, working on a design. Again, going back to the pencil, um, you might want the eraser and the tip of it to stay the same and only the middle part of it to stretch as it's being used in the graph. So that would be a perfect way of using the sliding design. Uh, I hope I've given you some good ideas. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks.